Welcome to the Bad Boys of Tech. This is going to be a different kind of episode today because we three amigos are sitting at the same table at an Airbnb in Austin for South by Southwest. And it's frankly a little bit disconcerting to see you in three dimensions. This has never happened before. That we were recorded in person like That's this. That's true. Yeah. Actually, uh, Stuart and I, I think when we did uh, Venture Beats VB Engage podcast, we maybe had three times that we recorded in person, maybe? Each maybe. one more painful than the last. Yes, yeah, so this is excruciating. <laughs> Actually, guys, it's awesome to see you. We're in Austin. I mean, we can't complain about anything. The sun is beautiful out there. I mean, it's a little bit humid. You know, you're not walking down the sidewalk so much as you're swimming for it. Um, but, you know, because Austin is beautiful and we have it's weird. this incredible array of events in front of us. I mean, I've been to, what, four different things already today and I've only got in last night. So He's been to bed. He's been to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. He's been yeah. a, he had lunch. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that was quite an event. Yes, um, and we're going around looking at all of these activations because that, that's what you have to call them here brand activations mm. um, all of these wonderful pop-ups all these people who are basically uh, doing smart things I've heard about some really good ones actually um, like the Game of Thrones activation where they had everybody give blood uh, because of course games of Game of Thrones they spill a lot of blood so you know uh, getting everyone to donate blood um, in order to get into the party how cool is that? <laughs> next in the party next door it, they're going to be asking for an arm or a leg to get it it's, and there's the porn activation where they no, no, no. no. <laughs> that, that is not a thing. You well, it is. It's, it the, is porn the, hub, it's the porn hub activation. It's yeah, a, that's that's in Los Angeles. Oh, is it? I yeah. didn't realize that. I've not seen those. It is the bad boys of tech, and <laughs> I'm Joel Kahn. That's Travis Wright and Stuart Rogers. And no, uh, no witty teasers today. No music. We gave uh, Giselda the week off from you know announcing us, and thought what we would do today is just talk tech with you guys, and maybe it'll suck. I, I hope it won't. I don't think it will. But it might. And I figured we could just talk about what we're excited about in technology right now. What toys we're playing with. Mm -hmm. That is the news. So let's let's start with Stuart since you are freshly landed here in the U.S. and have been overseas um, at a number of conferences. What are you pumped up about? Um, I'm glad you brought up toys. Um, And no, Travis knows those kinds of toys. Uh, We're still not in Los Angeles, my friend. Um... Smart toys. Smart toys are really interesting to me right now. Um, I just had an interview with uh, Nastasia Savina, who's the CEO of Just AI in the UK. And we talked about smart toys a lot because they're really seeing exponential growth right now. And it's kind of like a mixture between what you're seeing in artificial intelligence and robots, all those wonderful robots that you see all around uh, you know, CES and uh, the other big events like Mobile World Congress was absolutely full of robots. Did they have the Robo Temi there? T E M I. They may well have done because um, they had it at CS. I won one. Oh, and they're wow. shipping me one this month. It stands about I don't know, two and a half feet tall, and it's got a wow. Yeah, know, no, I know the one you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, you're such a winner. I am a winner. Thank Chicken you. dinner, nice one. Um, you know, smart toys are seeing huge growth, like. 38% uh, compound annual growth rate. Like, it's huge. So what, what kind of smart toys? Like, what's really impressive? I mean, there's all sorts. I mean, there's everything from your humble little Furby, which, of course, when the Furby first came out, it was not very smart. But now it's a full-blown, you know, device with voice recognition and does all sorts of crazy stuff. And, you know, but one of the things I was talking with Nastasia about is not just the fact that these smart toys exist and they're doing cool things um, and they're educating kids, they're entertaining kids... But also we have to be really, really, really careful about them because, of course, you've got all of that data. Um, there was this smartwatch uh, that was designed for children. I think it was called MySafes, uh, M-I-S-A-F-E-S. Um, and you won't find it anywhere now on the Internet because there was a big scandal because it uh, basically was so easy to hack. And you could get a child's name uh, all the way through to all of their details, including height and weight, <laughs> and their parents' telephone number and address. They should have called it, I am not safe. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we have these security concerns. We've heard stories about people hacking into webcam devices, like, you know, putting cameras in toys. Not a great idea if they're connected to the internet. So, um, you know, there's lots of things to consider there, and lots of security issues. Um, you know, there's a, there's a French startup called Snips, 
And SNPs is interesting because it's voice recognition, but it's all completely offline. They don't need to be connected, which is much more secure than a lot of these things that are powered by Alexa or Google Assistant because Whoa. they have to send all that data across the cloud. And you know, when you're dealing with children's data, you've got to be really, really careful. So I'm excited about smart toys, but at the same time, I think there needs to be some regulation. And I think we need to have all the manufacturers like get together. Uh, Nastasia said that actually. You know, one of the things she said is that Right now, it's for smaller companies like hers that are putting the technology inside the smart toys. But the big companies like the Hasbro's of this world are going to mm. come to the table. And when they do, that will probably force regulation. And I think that's a really good idea. Yeah. I worked with a company called Wonder Workshop that built this really cool robot. Um, they were originally called Play Eye. And uh, I, was, I was there at number five, I think, working with a company. And they morphed it, turned it into Wonder Workshop. And now they have these little robots that teach kids how to code. Which is really cool. So it's like this little robot. And you you get on the app and you you basically like if this then that. And so then th do this, then do this. Go mm -hmm. forward three, then turn right, then go three, then go left two, and then use the dump truck thing and pick up the thing. And so it's a really cool. Uh, it's a really cool tool. It was built by the guys uh, from um, from Google who built. Um, they built what was it? One of the it was a Google Cash app that they had built. It was something, I don't remember what it, originally what it was called. But, um, yeah, so it's really interesting to see these toys that are teaching kids actually how to code right. and how, how the whole process works. There was another one um, called, uh, what was it called, Robots, Robot Turtles. And we made a little song for it. Robot turtles teach your kids to code. And it was like, <laughs> <laughs> and my, my kids and I were singing it. I think that came off like a Kickstarter. But it's like, there's a lot of these new tools out there. Another one called Block Bits. I think it's called Block Bits. That, yes, uh, Block Bits. That teaches you how to, uh, that teaches you, your kids how to do all these little cool like STEM projects. So I got that from my daughter yeah. to teach her how to code. So my, my daughter understands the principles of coding at a really early age. Are you telling your kids to learn to code? I am. And then yeah. I got banned from Twitter. Amazing. <laughs> Hashtag learn to code. You're, you're out of there. Coding in a half show. <laughs> um, so like on the other end of the spectrum, I love the fact that robots are being used to help the elderly as well. And in Tel Aviv, I got to see again, uh, but they've really moved it forward. LEQ. Um, LEQ is a amazing device um, it's by far my favorite thing i saw on the press tour in, in tel aviv and what it is is it's a companion uh, uh, that is multimodal it, it actually understands your body language as well as your voice and you know it's, it's aware of all the people that are around you if you've brought friends home all that kind of stuff it'll play games it'll read to you it'll do music it'll uh, sense what you need next and, and remind you of things and all that good stuff and it's designed to support the elderly and give them uh, social support and and this is great because we know from research that if you are being more social with elderly people if they are having more social interaction it helps stave off things like senile dementia and alzheimer's disease Ooh. so you know this robot so is that's how you've kept cool senility stuff. away for so long uh that that and many other things <laughs> that's another that's episode good. though that's <laughs> good. things that keep Stuart young yeah yes but it's so uh, handy though to keep you know those you know when you get old you need a companion and it's like you know Alzheimer's kicks in and and you know the family doesn't visit as much and so like you can literally program those those robots to yeah. like to give you all these additional memories and showcase things of your past and like they become like a friend to the elderly which is yeah. really handy and LEQ is so so smart like well, LEQ how does that spell it's E W -L, L I hyphen Q mm. LEQ and yeah it's so smart it's smarter than uh, most of the AI devices I've, I've ever seen and they've actually got an entire platform now called Platform Q and uh, their plan is to put the LEQ technology inside things like cars um, so you know when a, when a car and it's not LEQ doing this but when a, a self-driving car or an assisted car puts the brakes on because they've sensed that somebody is going to just like turn into you if, if they don't brake for you mm-hmm it's the car doing that, but LEQ will realize that's happened and come in and explain to you what has happened in nice language and say, I'm really sorry I had to put the brakes on, but we were just about to get hit by that person there. You know, mm. And it's a really nice, beautiful conversational interface. But there's one more thing about it that I really like, and that's the fact that it looks like a robot and it sounds like a robot. I'm done with these robots that are trying to be like copies of us. Right? Mm -hmm. 
If if in the fifty to hundred years in the future we have robots walking around that look just like us, I am not down with that. I want robots to look like robots, so I know I'm interacting with a robot. I think psychologically that's a very important point. And do you want it to talk like this also, or can it talk with a human voice? I like the fact that LEQ talks with a human voice with a slight robot edge, so you still know it's a robot. Just a little bit of beep boop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, you guys remember that I purchased the Sony Ibo, the, right. the doggy, and it was one of my like favorite robots of all time. Twenty seven hundred dollars for it. I ended up selling it because I felt like the AI in it wasn't quite ready for prime time. And I feel like Sony missed a trick years ago when they when they when they finally got to the uh, was it the ERS one ten model or something like that, which was brilliant. Um, they brought out the PlayStation 4 about the same time and then they cancelled the Sony iBo project and then they brought it back very recently. Mm. And they missed a trick there. Like, which device would have been absolutely perfect for shipping tons of Sony iBos if not the PS4, right? Mm. An app on there that lets you code and program the iBo and interact with it on games and all sorts of other stuff with the PlayStation Eye. Mm. They missed a massive trick with that. It's mm. very limited, and you're right about that. I agree. They could have really tied that in. My problem was that it didn't seem to want to leave the area it was in very much. And I understand it's a puppy and it needs time to learn, but I turned it on a bunch and I felt like my D-Bot, which is my vacuum cleaner knockoff, you know, that go, the robot vacuum cleaner that goes around, knows its way around my place and is more curious to find every nook and cranny because it has to mm. than the eyeball. So you're competing and you're like, all right, D-Robot, you're doing way better than the Ibo. Yeah. Get with just, it, Ibo. Yeah. Can we just clarify what you mean by you turned your Ibo on a lot? If you don't know... Then, uh, no, I'm not going to explain okay. it. Uh, in a future episode, we'll talk about robot bestiality, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's a puppy! <laughs> he Carl turned it on a lot. Stuart. <laughs> and we've officially gone into the gutter here, courtesy of, of our British friend. Of course. Friend. Um, there was another one, and I wish I could remember. What's the robot that's been around for years? It's kind of got this. Rosie. Head. Rosie the robot on Jensen. Yeah. It's got the circular head and it's on a base. Pepper. They just, they're discontinuing it. So it's kind of got some uh, echo functionality to it that you can talk to it. It looks up things. And the news this week that I read was people who own one of these things and have become used to it were welcomed by a message from it saying, I'm sorry to say that as of blah, 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 these functionalities I will no longer be able to perform. And they're uh, shutting down the cloud. I don't think that's Pepper, because Pepper is the very popular robot. Um, I think it's originally French, um, but is currently being employed in banks all over Japan and elsewhere because mm. it's so, so good. No, it's not the it's Pepper. Not Pepper. It's the, the Jibo. Jibo, yes. Yeah, Jibo. so Jibo, it, this, it looks like... Uh, Jibo's the one that looks a bit like a mirror. Yeah, mm. yeah. It's, it's on a platform and it's round, and, and a lot of people apparently, a lot, for those in the space... A good number of people bought them, and um, they're saying it, it, it actually announced to people that its functions will someday be limited, and then it said, maybe someday when robots are more advanced than today and everyone has them in their homes, you can tell yours that I said, hello. Ajibo then did an adorable... <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, pocketlint.com, the article says, Jibo then does an adorable, albeit pitiful, pitiful dance. <laughs> Oh my it's God. like, I'm dying. My life with you is over. Goodbye, friend. <laughs> Goodbye. Sell me on eBay. <laughs> Who's going to want to buy it? Nobody's going to want it's it. It's just, just an antique. So wow. That is true. I've not had any of those robots. I figure that they're not quite ready for prime time yet. So, um, And I have wooden floors. So I don't know that the, the Roomba is going to help too much. Well, I'm really curious. So the Temi, which uh, we'll link to all of these in the show notes, is the one that I won that's coming my way and you could see it's got a tablet on top right. of it and it, it's got like a, a stand that's yep. up high and it's <laughs> supposed to follow you around if you want it to and be on hand to answer questions and provide <laughs> information. That's great. So I'll be able to like, you can like give your friends the, uh, the ability to log into it so you can see them on your robot. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's beautiful. Yeah. So it's in, in, Honestly, it, I saw this at CES, and the guy, I told him I was getting an IBO, and he said, how, how much did you pay for that? I told him it was $2,800, and he says, how much do you think this thing is? I said, at least that much. 
Um, not true. This robot is selling for fourteen ninety nine, fifteen hundred. That includes the tablet. That includes it's the whole. Is thing. it a, is it an Android tablet? I free think? shipping, free return. I would assume. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how much it's got in terms of robot functions, but it certainly makes a great telepresence unit, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, you could have this in offices, and you can have meetings with people. You work remotely; they can still see you, and it looks a little bit more like an actual like person, just in the, in the design. It's got a bit of weight to it. Um, I had a telepresence unit for a little while in the San Francisco office of VentureBeat. Um, but it was the one that's on a stick oh, with the oh. iPad on it. Um, and seriously, like when I actually went and visited the telepresence unit in San Francisco, I really felt like putting a coat hanger and a blazer on it just to bulk it out. You know? <laughs> I, was, I was worried people would think that I was actually anorexic and that I was, you know, only two inches wide. Because um, <laughs> it was a stick with an iPad on top. Uh, but this looks like an actual robot. It's got a bit of um, form and function to it. It's it's really nice. I I think it's uh, it's interesting. But it it is really less of a robot, and more of a telepresence unit, right? Um, I yeah, we'll find out for sure. They're calling it a personal robot, and they've sold out two batches so far. They're now on their third one with delivery for June. So mine yeah. is expected either by the end of March or beginning of April. So we'll be shooting some so video. Cool. We should definitely have said like a Bad Boys of Tech episode there where we tune in and it's like, here's here's Travis and Joel and here's, here's Stuart and Joel. <laughs> uh, Stuart's no longer a bad boy, but Timmy is. <laughs> yeah. or, or is it Timmy? I don't know. It's T-E with this. Timmy? Timmy. Maybe. Yeah, I, I, let's call it Timmy. I guess I'm going to give it a name. Or oh, it could be Timmy. Could be Timmy. I don't know. You guys check it out. Robo, Timmy. Robo Timmy. <laughs> Timmy. 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 Dot Timmy. Okay, so let's move on from <laughs> robots. Travis, what uh, you don't play with many toys. You 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 do like gadgets though. Mm-hmm. You know, actually the coolest gadget that I got was uh, recently is this thing called the Jam Stack. And so the Jam Stack is this Bluetooth amp that attaches to your guitar, right? And so it hooks to the end where your, where your strap would go, right? You hook it on there, and then you can connect your cord. And so now you have a portable amp on the go. And so I had this amazing electric guitar, this um, Fender Stratocaster that I had that I bought back in the 90s. And it had these lace sensors. It was, a, it was a Fender Plus. Beautiful red guitar. And then my son was born, and I was like, or getting ready to be born. I was like, oh, I got to sell this thing. We got to get... We got to get some. We got to get some. Uh, some. We got to get a bed and all this other stuff. You got to get with the kids. So I sold my, my guitar seventeen years ago, and and then I was going through some videos recently. Um, I connected my eight millimeter video camera to my laptop. And I started pulling out these old videos, and I kept watching these videos and me playing this guitar. I'm like, oh man, I love that guitar. So I found that guitar online, and uh, so I bought it from Reverb.com, uh-huh. and it arrived yesterday. My Jamstack actually arrived before that. Oh my God, it sounds so good. And so this Jamstack thing is, is maybe what, not even a foot long. It connects to your guitar. And then it actually has a, a portable thing where you can connect your, your iPhone or your, your Android device. And then it has a cord that connects to the amp. So literally you can go in and say, okay, Guns N' Roses, um, you know, Sweet Child of Mine. And play that on the app. And your guitar will then sound like that effect on the guitar. Wow. Go, so literally you go, um, smoke on the water. And like, boop, boop. And now your guitar sounds like smoke on the water. Yeah, it is yeah, freaking yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome. So I played, like, play, so I flew out here yesterday, but I played guitar about an hour and a half yesterday afternoon. And it's just, it's so, so smooth, this is like, this so is a cool fun. gadget for like street musicians, right? Oh, huge. Oh, yeah. Eight hours. You can charge, one charge lasts for eight hours. That is cool looking. Yeah. I, I might have to, uh, to eight, take a look at eight it. Eight hours of street music. I mean, Travis, you could make ten, maybe fifteen dollars in that time. Yeah, that's, well, no, I would. Right? And they would be like, put that. They would pay me money to put my guitar away. They're like, is this thing even in tune? <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're less of a busker and more of just a hostage situation. Uh, I just, it's just fun to play guitar, man. It's like I love to play guitar. It's just fun. What, what I thought would be really cool, though, is that I've never seen anybody have it. Like, why can't they just take it, take a you know um, the cord, plug it in, and have that be a Bluetooth device that you could connect to any other portable speaker that you have? I've never seen that. Literally, all you need is a, a Bluetooth with a, with a guitar cord, plug in, input it in the guitar, 
connect that Bluetooth to any speaker that's a Bluetooth ready, and then you yeah. got an amp. Like that you does know, exist. That does exist. That does exist. I've not seen that before, but I was thinking after I saw this Jamstack thing that would totally make sense just to have a little. Yeah, actually, you know, there's been many iterations of that exact thing. Um, uh, I actually had one a, a while back from Sony. Um, these two little units with the cables coming out, and you plugged one into where you wanted the sound to come out. You plug the other one where you want mm. the output to come from, mm -hmm. and it was Bluetooth connect and bang. Ah, probably not the best quality sound, but depending it was, if you, it was actually remarkably good. Um, yeah, mm. remarkably. I guess good. if you're in a close distance, it's not so bad. But sometimes I got this. <laughs> it's just funny because I wanted to try it out because I love I love to sleep to. Uh, like binaural beats, like that hemi-sync type of music where like where the tones are just a little different, delta tones and gamma tones. And, and so I got this pillow called, um, I think it's called Zeke, Z-E-E-Q. And uh, you, you, you connect your pillow to the Bluetooth. To, yeah. and, it's, and so you're sitting there and then you can put on any music or you can put on any tone. Or, and it's really... The vi the vi the vi um, the the volume is not high enough. Really, it's like I wish it was just a little bit higher. But the Bluetooth doesn't always pick up. Right, so I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm like, really? I just went to the bathroom. Why do I got to freaking connect Bluetooth again? But it keeps track of your it keeps track of your sleep cycles. It keeps track of how loud you snore, <laughs> like the volume, the decibels of your snore. You can see, like you had great sleep last night. Oh, you had poor sleep. Your snore was as loud as a motorcycle. This is like high as it, actually your high the highest it gets is your snore was as loud as a jet, which I don't think that's <laughs> possible. <laughs> I actually you're sleeping in the other room while we're here at this Airbnb, and, and that's pretty much like a jet. Yeah, your jet levels. Oh, jet levels. Nice. That's good. <laughs> like a like a Boeing seven four seven. That's pretty good. Good stuff. So you know, all the tech doesn't need to be this cutting edge stuff to improve our lives. When we were at CES. Uh, of course, took time to sit in the massage chairs, and they've got some high dollar ones we talked about on a previous episode, but they've also got the foot massagers, you know, you can put your feet in these things, mm -hmm. and after, I, I, every year I go, I sit in those things, I put my feet in, I go, oh, this is so amazing. So after CES, I went on Amazon, and I'm like, these things are cheap, $130, $140. For a killer foot massager that, you know, you slip your feet in there and you can turn on the heat, you can turn, you know, the how long it's going to pulse for. And I, I'm like, why didn't I have one of these before? Every day at home now, I'll pull that thing up and put it at the foot of my sofa and slip my feet in there. And they say, you know, don't use for more than 15 or 30 minutes. I'm like, no, I'm on repeat. Mm, you know, I'll well, sit wait, I got to say, wait, because I have one of those. Yeah. And I'm like... Oh, like when you're walking around at a conference and your feet hurt, they, they feel amazing. But if you haven't walked around a whole lot, your feet, you don't really need it. But like, dude, that thing sprained my metatarsal arch, dude. Oh. <laughs> like literally, because it was like squeezed. And like, and like it, it strained it for, and then, so I haven't, literally I haven't used that thing since. And I had to get, I got this like uh, little foot pad thing that I put on that with a little arch support. Because like literally, like it strained my arch. And I was like, ah. Like he walking down the stairs, like I felt I was like, dude, like that that thing got me. I don't know. So yeah. don't I don't know if I would be like double it up, dude. Well, Power up the machine. It does I, give you the warning. Yeah. Watch your metatarsals. <laughs> and I, I, I had like many, many, many moons ago, probably like two decades ago, I I foolishly bought one of those uh shiatsu massage things that's the the three balls on the either side that rotate around and you're supposed to put it on the back of your neck and, and mm -hmm. settle back on your sofa and enjoy a beautiful mm. shiatsu massage mm -hmm. and actually it was more like uh you know a kung fu master <laughs> who's trying to <laughs> paralyze me with their fingers <laughs> this thing would dig right into like, the back holy of your shiatsu. Neck. and i'm like oh my god i can't actually move any of the muscles in my body it's completely paralyzed me <laughs> it was the worst 50 pounds i'd ever spent in my life <laughs> who do i sue oh this? my god you used it, you used so it once and i'm i'm like I can't move. Get this thing off my neck. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Did you beta test it before you bought it? Or no? no, I just thought, oh, that looks good. Oh, I'll this buy looks it. great. Oh, yeah. uh, well, the thing is, I have such. I, I have quite a like uh, a, a thick neck. Back then, I had really well developed neck muscles because I used to drive um, race semi professionally, and it really, really was in the wrong position, and it just went. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh, I can't move. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> How long did you not move? Um, I was there for like a good five minutes shouting for somebody to come and help me. <laughs> well, it's still massaging. James, stop this crazy thing. <laughs> well, 
injured metatarsals and, and Stuart's uh, <laughs> fantastic neck muscles aside, I'm linking to this one on Amazon. It's the uh, Renfo Shiatsu Foot Massager Machine with heat, deep kneading therapy, air compression, relief, foot pain from plantar fasciitis, improved blood. I can't, there's more to it. Mm -hmm. stops it That's a pretty blood. good review on that four point something star. That's why stars. I bought yeah. it. $129.99. I use it all the time. We're not talking high tech here, but improving the quality of life. In fact, uh, my girlfriend comes over and the first thing she does is sit on the sofa and pull the massager over. I'm like, oh, nice to see you too. Nice yeah, to see you. She's going to say hi. Like, yeah. Hello. Uh, hi. Enjoy the massage. Mm -hmm. hmm. Very good. So what, what, what other, you know, on this theme, um, pieces of technology that might not be cutting edge, but that you've discovered have really improved the quality of your life. So simple that you're like, why didn't I have this before? You know, there's a, <clears throat> there's a free app that I use, which helps me with, um, and, and this is a really big subject. I'm writing a, an entire book about uh, how to avoid jet lag. So it's not like you can just say, oh, what's the trick to avoiding jet lag? Because it's not just a trick. But this is part of the armory that helps me with that. It also, by the way, helps me and otherwise helps me with uh, just my general health. Because um, it turns out that when you, when you sleep, uh, it's not necessarily about like the length of the sleep. You know, if you sleep for nine hours, it's not necessarily better than if you sleep for eight or seven or six. What is important is that you wake up at the right time in your sleep cycle. The sleep cycles, yes, right? yes, for sure. And there's this app. This circadian rhythm. rhythm. Yes, yeah, circadian rhythms. Um, there's an cicadas? app. Cicadas? What do bugs have to do with your sleep? Oh, cicadas. Um, now there's, so there's uh, an app that... Um, is customizable so that you can tell it how long it takes you to get to sleep. So you can use other apps to measure how long mm -hmm. you, on average, get to sleep in. For me, it's seven minutes. For mm -hmm. most most adults, average time to fall asleep is 14 minutes. Yep. Um, and then what it does is it takes the amount of time it's going to take you to get to sleep plus your first circadian rhythm, and then you can see all of your cycles. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you say, okay, I'm going to fall asleep now, and it then just simply tells you um, if you sleep one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, four cycles, when to set your alarm for. And if you press the button, it sets your alarm for you. And it's available on iOS and Android. What's it called? It's called Sleepy Time. Mm-hmm. And it's free. There's, it's, a web, there's the website used to... I mean, that's I pulled up that website years ago, sleepytie.me. Mm -hmm. Now they have an app. Yeah, Sleepy Time is the great app. Um, yep, Sleepy Time Sleep. It's, it's a great app. It just handles it all for you. Dude, I didn't um, know it set the alarm. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, you can set your alarm straight from that app. And that's how I sleep every single day. So last night, for example, got into Austin, 11.30 p.m., um, went, put my bags into place, went around the corner, had a couple of old fashions, met some great people. Um, I needed to stay up until 2 a.m. because I had to make a phone call to a company in the U.K. that started at 8 a.m. U.K. time. Um, once I made that phone call, I went to sleep. I used sleepy time. And I woke up around about 7 a.m. because mm -hmm. that's exactly what I needed. Now, I had, I had three hours of sleep. And you're looking at me and you're hearing me on, uh, on the podcast. But you, you guys are looking at me. Do I look like I've only had three hours sleep? No, I mean, you, look, you look great. Did you sleep any on the plane? Um, well, yeah, there's a whole complex thing around that because I did a 22-hour flight, three different flights, uh, 22 hours of flying yesterday. So I slept in certain parts. I would be trash after as many hours and so would you. As many hours as you just traveled, I would not be recording a podcast right now or being at South yeah. by. Now, sleepy time is only one small part of that, but it's it's a great part of that. Mm -hmm. It's really simple. It's free. You know. Yep. I've used it. I've used that for years. Yeah. And I have it right here. It's like, and so that's what's so handy about that thing is that once you realize it, and it's like, so Joel this morning woke me up and like in the middle of a sleep cycle. So I was like, I was tired this morning. I was like, oh, I was like, because I didn't know what time we were going to wake up. We didn't really decide like, what, hey, we're going to go to. South by this morning at what time? We didn't decide, and so I, that, that's so that is so crucial, man. If yeah. I wake up at the end of a sleep cycle, I'm feeling great. I hop out of bed, I'm good. If I'm not in the middle of a sleep cycle, dude, I am like, brr. Yep, and it's not just about um, you know reducing jet lag or eradicating jet lag, but it also helps with my general health, especially since I'm a, a nomad. I move around a lot, you know. Uh, as we've said before, I'm moving from city to city, and once every five days on average. Um, so there's a whole armory of things that I do to make sure I stay healthy while I'm moving around. Some of those are things like apps, um, and you know they can really help you. Johnson and Johnson have a seven-minute workout app that's free for life and no advertising. Um, so that instantly makes it better than a lot of the other seven-minute workout apps, right? Mm. Um, so you know people can get that too. 
Um, uh, but I actually I did write out an article for the Glide, which is the Nomad blog that uh, I uh, I write with my friend Victoria. Um, so you know, people can read that if they want to see how I keep well, fit and healthy. This one right here, right? I just I, I read this. Uh, well, this uh, the, I, I wrote one about how I book for cheapest, spontaneous, and planned flights every time. That, and the previous one was how I stay fit and healthy while I'm doing okay. The we'll link both those in the show notes. That's actually what I want to talk about next because I saw your article and. You know, both Travis and I, we, we travel quite a bit, uh, both for business and for leisure. And I'm a United 1K, so I tend to try to book on United if I can, but sometimes the prices are ridiculous. And you mentioned Momondo. Yeah, I and love it. I downloaded Momondo. We are going to, Travis and I are emceeing uh, the Blockchain Summit at Paris Blockchain Week in, in Paris in mid-April. And I use that to find flights if I went on Expedia, I wouldn't see Norwegian Air. And Norwegian right. Air gave me an incredible oh, deal yeah. for round trip. And not only that, but it's direct from Denver to Charles de Gaulle Airport. And I thought I would not have found this if it were not for Momondo and mm -hmm. for your article. Thank you, man. Um, well, thank yeah, you. I, I love the guys at Momondo. They've done a really amazing job. And, you know, it's it's my favorite for for uh, spontaneous and planned flights simply because it does include all of the airlines, regardless, even mm -hmm. the budget airlines, and it finds deals you just yeah. can't find. Yeah, Skiplag does that as well, but this seems like Momondo has more air airlines. Yeah, and also Skiplag, if you use it for its real purpose, which is the to hidden city fares. do the hidden city fares. Um, that's no good for me. I can only use Skiplag if I'm doing like a weekend retreat somewhere, and I can store my main suitcase somewhere because right. of course if you use skip lag and do hidden city yeah. stuff and you check your bag your bag is going to the final destination and you're not so mm -hmm. you'll never see your bag again uh, so don't don't use skip lag with checked bags well i use i use skip lag. well you for, can for, for hidden city <coughs> stuff well right? you can't have to for the hidden city stuff for the, for the regular stuff no problem but, yeah yeah so yeah. i found i found that for from kansas city to athens greece um in in april <laughs> through united $2,400 flight through skip lagged and through Norwegian Air, $540. Right. So it was like one fifth the price. And I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to pay for a check bag for Norwegian Air when I get to, uh, uh New Jersey and New Jersey to wherever to continue New Jersey to Rome or whatever when I'm flying from, uh, EWR. But yeah, <laughs> one fifth the price. That right. was huge. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. <clears throat> Right on. So I would say, speaking of blockchains, we are going to Paris for the Blockchain Week. We oui, oui. That is true. So many of you have probably heard us in our Bad Crypto podcast. And some of you have probably have bad coin. And so one of our biggest pieces of news that we're actually releasing today at the event that we're that we are ha we're having an event here in Austin. It's the Bad Crypto Meetup here at South by Southwest. The Hard Fork. The Hard Fork. Which is actually, now that you think about it, I mean, that the name was a joke, yeah. right? Because it's our second one. Yeah, it's but, actually But we are perfect. actually hard forking. Yeah, we're actually hard forking our original Badcoin. So we set up Badcoin as more of a joke on the BitShares platform, um, which um, we could literally, I think it would cost 100 bucks or so to be able to own our own, you know, coin that we could send out, yeah. a Badcoin, and we gave out $2 billion plus. Well, now we have actually have an amazing development team that has built a bad coin blockchain, which pulls in five different blockchain algorithms, one from, uh, one from Bitcoin, one from Litecoin, one from Dash, and then a couple other uh, algorithms as well, making it 10 times faster than Bitcoin, 100 times less power consumption and mining of Bitcoin, and uh, secure all the good stuff. And we're going to be launching this thing in sometime in April, but we're announcing it today. So if you have have uh, re ever received any bad coin from the from original podcast, make sure to go to badcoin.net, sign up to uh, to be announced when we are going to make that bad boy go live, which sometime in April. But you're going to want to be one of the first people to know. And then if you have original bad coin, you're going to be able to swap that out for the new bad coin. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think it's just so awesome. It's like literally we, we, we set out we set out something doing a joke. Oh, we're going to create this bad coin. Ha ha. And then now conceivably it could be it could be way cooler than we even thought it was going to be. It could be. And uh, we're not doing an ICO. You can't, you know, we're not selling tokens mm -hmm. to anybody. Uh, it's not a security of any kind and uh, we're we're pretty excited about it. Better than Bitcoin. 
better than it's it's a better version of Bitcoin. Wow, more fair because what it, the one thing about Bitcoin is that you can set up a whole warehouse full of GPU miners and ASIC computers. You can't do that with ours, and that's the one thing that that some of the OGs in the crypto space are going, whoa, really, ASIC resistant? And so you can't have, it's a more decentralized mining coin, which is very novel. Like everyone that we've talked to so far, and we've talked to a lot of big wigs in the crypto space, they go, that's that's never, nobody's done that. Nobody's done what you're doing there. And that's can like, I, ooh. Can I mine it with a Palm Pilot? <laughs> you, you, you have to be able to connect to the internet. Well, the Palm Pilots did connect to the internet. You know that, right? Mm. Did they? Yes. Yeah. Well, well, I don't know. Maybe eventually. Through a browser, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Can you, is there a browser? Uh, yeah, there's a browser available. Mm. Potentially, we'll have to see. I, you, I, you might be the richest person on, on Earth with uh, all the bad coins. So I, I may have to go and find a Sony Clio somewhere, sitting in a, in a box somewhere. You know, and see if we can mine bad coins. That's really that. funny. We can ask people, once they're mining it, to send us in a video, you know, or a picture mm-hmm. of what they're mining right. what's with. Your, what's your bad What's your bad? What's the coin worst mining? bad coin? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What's your slow hash yeah. rate? Yeah, yeah. You know, Amazing. What rewards are you that's why there's five algorithms right so if you do connect with the ASIC well then that's going to connect to the Bitcoin algorithm and the difficulty is sky high right, right. and if you come in with a you know smartphone we're going to connect to this algorithm so it's, it's device specific depending on which device you're mining with Amazing. that gives you the algorithm which is going to deter either way it keeps it fair I'm immediately going to go and find an old uh, Nokia 8530 as well mm. well I don't know the dumb phones are going to be able to so far on the dumb phones it's a matter of testing so it's not live yet, but all the bugs they've done, they've tested a lot of the stuff. But the thing is, is I was like, hey, well, make it go live so we can try to break it. Well, there's some things we want right. to test. They're like, well, once it's I, live, I, it's I'm, live. I'm, gonna, I'm determined to see if we can mine using WAP on an 8530. WAP. If we could. Right? WAP was, yeah. was what we used to connect to the wow, internet. WAP. That's mm. WAP. Before, before browsers, we mm-hmm. used WAP. Yeah. Um, you know, it was well, just, then, then that opened that would open up all of Africa and India and all those other third part, all those third imagine world countries, yeah, developing countries. developing countries, third is, developing. Is, oh my yeah. word! <laughs> yeah, I'm actually uh, I'm reading a great book right now. What you're reading yeah, a book that uh, Ray Edwards mentioned on his podcast called Factfulness: Why Everything You Think You Know About the World Is Wrong, and it's talked about how. The world has changed so much even in the last 20 years that what we think about what third world countries are like is not what it was. Like right. there's not nearly mm. as many people starving, you know, that are malnutrition. That are, I'm mm. not saying it doesn't exist. It does. Yeah. But the world is improving measurably on, on so And everyone's levels. still unhappy. And everyone's still unhappy. <laughs> and here's what's really interesting is they, he, he gives a, um, a, a 10 question quiz at the beginning of the book to ask you, you know, uh, are there more people, you know, will there be um, more children on the face of the earth, you know, in 20 years or less or about the same? He asks about 10 questions and most people in most countries get less than one out of three of those questions right. In fact, he had monkeys take the same test and across the board in every country of the world, the monkeys got more of these questions right the right answers than any of the human beings did there's some outliers there's some really smart monkeys out there there's some smart monkeys out there and the point is is that what we think about the world is is not uh, spot on and next week on bad monkeys of tech uh, (laughs) never do that again (laughs) never do (laughs) no don't do no this is this is kind of fun though having this discussion what do you guys think about it write us at badboysoftech at gmail.com let us know if you like the informal approach where we're just talking about tech and gadgets and software and apps and things on our mind basically a little conversation you hear a little combo I mean what does Joe Rogan do right he sits down at the mic he's got his guests and they just have a conversation it's not polished it's not it, it's not edited it's raw mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is the joel rogan podcast <laughs> write us badboysattack at gmail.com let us know what you think and of course subscribe yeah. absolutely and if you think we should do this in this conversational way but do it between a couple of ferns or something that's never been done before that's, that's, true. Been. that's yeah. never been done mm. maybe a maybe a couple palm trees 
in a nice island, island location. But you understand the Zach I do, I do totally got that. Okay. There was an amazing story about Zach Galifianakis. He, um, like, before he had made it, before he had made it famous, he, uh, he went to this laundromat all the time, and there was this lady there who was homeless, and um, he basically became a friend with this lady. The, the dude who owned the laundromat let her stay there because she was helping everybody with the laundromat and kind of wash it. And he, over time, he became her friend, and you know, and and then she, he would come in. She would help him do his laundry, and he would, you know, he would go get her some groceries and stuff. And then he he made it big on Hangover, and then he literally bought her an apartment, got her all furnished, set up. He's taking her to multi, uh, you know, uh, red carpet events. Like Zach Galifianakis is a badass dude. That's, he is an amazing, so amazing good. soul. Yeah. And that story, like watching him and the laundromat woman, uh, maybe we can find it and put it on the show notes. But it was just like it was a goal cast video I saw. It was so touching. I was like, dude, Zach Galifianakis has just gone up in my book several notches by how sweet of a soul he is. That's nice. That was really cool. Hand me a tissue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for listening to the show, everybody. Um, group hugs. Stay bad. Oh. It's, stay bad. Say it. Stay bad. This was the BBC. (laughs) (laughs) You would do the BBC thing. And uh, this is Radio 4, the BBC, and uh, everybody stay bad. God (laughs) God save the Queen. (laughs) Cheerio and all that rot. Cheerio, cheerio. Cheerio to all my friends. The Bad Boys of Tech.